I actually had a request to do one of these screencast o matic things again, and I decided to focus my attention on this page, the history of solar system formation and evolution hypotheses. Now, one of the biggest things I've seen that's wrong with this is, well, the, sh the, the myopic nature of it all. I mean, a lot of scientists these days, they want to place everything into their beliefs, into, you know, to fit their beliefs. And they, they never consider that maybe their beliefs are getting in the way of them understanding things. And I'll show you where this has a big uh, problem. This is classification of the theories right here. All right. It says here. Genes in 1931 divided the various models you know, of planet formation into two groups. Those where the material for planet formation came from the sun, and those where it didn't and may be concurrent or consecutive. That's, that's more reasonable. Um, either it came from the sun or it didn't. In stellar metamorphosis, all the material that the planets formed out of did not come from the sun. And, they and it was not concurrent or consecutive with the sun at all. They are completely individual, independent structures of, of the sun. And William McRae, in 1963, divided them into two groups as well. Those that relate the formation of the planets to the formation of the sun, and those where it is independent of the formation of the sun, where the planets form after the sun becomes a normal star. See... There they make the big mistake again. Did you see it? It says where the planet's formation is independent of the formation of the sun. Okay, that's great. That's where stellar metamorphosis comes in, but then they go back and they screw up again. And then they say where the planets form after the sun becomes a normal star. Negative. The planets formed way before the sun becomes a normal star because the objects that are orbiting the sun right now are vastly older than the sun. They are much more evolved stars. So stellar metamorphosis doesn't even fit into this guy's definition, but it does fit into genes as sort of. And as well, Terhar in Cameroon distinguished between those theories that considered a closed system which is the development of the sun in a possible solar envelope that starts with a proto-sun rather than the sun itself, and state that Bellet calls these theories monistic, and those that consider an open system, which is where there is interaction between the sun and some foreign body that is supposed to have been the first step in the developments leading to the planetary system, and state that Bellet calls these theories dualistic. So as well, this is one of those ideas that everything revolves around the sun's formation. Instead of metamorph stellar metamorphosis, it doesn't rely on the sun's formation at all. So even the monistic and dualistic uh, versions of classification of how the planets form doesn't even fit. It's all because of their main root philosophy that the sun is as old as, or if not older, than the planets. Herb Reeves' classification also categorizes categorizes them as co-genetic with the sun, but not, or not, but also as formed from alternate, altered or unaltered stellar interstellar material. He as well recognizes four groups, models based on the solar nebula originated by Soderbergh, Kant, and Laplace in the 1700s. Those are incorrect. The ones proposing a cloud captured from interstellar space, major proponents being Alvin and Gustav Arrhenius, in 1978. That those were incorrect as well, but Alvin was trying to use critical ionization velocity heavily to explain that, and uh, it was just misapplied. I'm sorry, Alvin, that, that's, that's not how it works. He, he was also using the same root philosophy as all these others, in that, you know, the planets formed after the sun formed, or during when the sun was forming. In stellar metamorphosis, the planets are evolved stars and are vastly older than the sun. The sun adopted them. 
All right, and number three, the binary hypothesis, which proposes that a sister star somehow disintegrated and a portion of its dissipating material was captured by the sun. Principal hypothesizer being Littleton in the 1940s. That, uh, that's just completely out there. It's unnecessary at all to, to throw in ad hoc extra stars to, you know, do things. That, it, it was just as, that's just as ad hoc as the disk theory. And four, the close approach filament ideas of Jeans, Jeffries, and Wolfson and Dormand. In Williams and Kremen, the categories are number one, models that regard the origin and formation of the planets as being essentially related to the sun, with the two formation processes taking place concurrently or consecutively, meaning at the same time or right after the sun was forming. Those are incorrect the objects that are orbiting the sun have been around for much longer than the sun has. Number two, models that regard formation of the planets as being independent of the formation process of the sun. The planets forming after the sun becomes a normal star. This has two subcategories. Well, they have, they have this right as planets being independent of the formation process of the sun. But then they go off on the wrong tangent again and saying they formed after the sun becomes a normal star. And then they subcategorize that. So they completely miss the point right here as well. They have it right where it's independent, but then they have it after the sun formed. So the sun is always being placed as the oldest construct. And that's because, you know, the accepted fusion model has the sun as being really, 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 really old and something as rocky and as ancient looking as the earth is something that's younger than something that's plasmatic and incredibly energetic which is you know against natural philosophy when you really put two and two together all right i don't want to go over this or that but basically you you really get the point here is that when they classify the theories everything is based off of the sun existing before the planets or the sun existing as the planets are forming so basically the real classifications haven't been actually developed yet these are still uh, subgroup this is these are all one single subgroup is the idea that the planets rely on the formation of the sun negative what actually happens is that stars evolve and they exchange orbits many many times over and there are vastly older stars that are completely independent of the sun except for maybe when the sun photo evaporates the surface or rips away the atmosphere of a gas giant like as in the hot jupiter cases so basically there's that and they're going to keep all these ideas because they're in between a rock and a hard place. The hard place is they can't go against the fusion model or else they'll get ridiculed as cranks. And the rock being up here. Where is it at? The rock being this. However plausible it may appear at first sight. Crap, what did I just do? However plausible it may appear at first sight, the nebula hypothesis still faces the obstacle of angular momentum. If the sun had indeed formed from the collapse of such a cloud, the planet should be rotating far more slowly. The sun, though it contains 99.9% .9 of the system's mass, contains just 1% of its angular momentum. This means that the sun should be spinning more, much more rapidly. Basically, uh, the nebula hypothesis is accepted even though it's absolutely false. You can't get over this obstacle. Angular momentum, you just don't lose angular momentum with magic. And if, unless they try to solve that problem, they're never going to, they're never going to get it unless they really, really examine what they're trying to, what they're trying to figure out they have to examine their assumptions but like I said earlier the rock is the fusion model they can't go against the fusion model 
So the sun is as old as all the other objects, so they're stuck. And then they have the hard place, which is the angular momentum problem. And that's that. Today is August 30th, 2015. Everybody have a good day.